Welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Cody and I am joined by the wonderful Voodoo Val as always. How are you doing Val? Pretty good. How are you Cody? <laughs> I am fantastic. If you guys have never watched Juxtapaint, basically me and Val, if you are unfamiliar with our work, we have very differing styles. And uh, on this show, we really like to just kind of come up with a theme and just draw whatever our heart desires uh, in our differing uh, differing artistic styles. And it's just a lot of fun to kind of see what we can come up with while we work. And it's also fun to see what you guys can come up with uh, for our themes as well. Um, this week, however, we are having a special Thanksgiving uh, themed stream because next week Adobe Live is actually off for Thanksgiving break here in America. Um, so we are actually going to be uh, Val is actually going to be making a little Thanksgiving card, and I am going to be illustrating a Thanksgiving recipe that I love. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, we have some tips and tricks on uh, like perspective and color and stuff coming your way today. So yeah, if you have any anything to add, Val, take it away. Yeah, yeah. So um, some of the previous episodes, um, Cody and I have... Uh, taken our work that we've done and have created these little trading cards, which we are going to be sending out to folks who win um, some giveaways, which will be happening over on Instagram. And, and I think it will be really cool because as today is kind of our holiday Thanksgiving themed uh, stream, you guys can pick up some cool little um, holiday greeting cards and a nifty recipe from us in those giveaways as well, which will be cool. However, I think especially with your recipe, people can like test out that recipe, whether they win the giveaway or not. So that should yeah. be pretty fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, we do have, uh, if you check the link below um, in the description, we do have a little resource for resource folder where anytime Cody and I um, kind of create something for you for one of these episodes, we throw it down in there. So Cody has um, created a really cool um, or offered a really cool perspective um, tutorial type thing with examples of various um, perspective uh, for uh, items, illustrating items and things which you can take a look at. But I'll let you kind of get into that, Cody, because that's your that's your thing, your, your <laughs> wheelhouse, so you can show that off. Um, but yeah. yeah, I hope you folks will join us. Um, if you'd like to create something with us for the Juxtapaint show, definitely post that on social media with hashtag um, um, is it Adobe Live Juxtapaint or Juxta... Juxta oh, it's right here. It's <laughs> Juxtapaint Adobe Live. <laughs> okay, Juxtapaint Adobe Live. I always get those two mixed up. Um, but yeah, so let us see what you create. But um, without further ado, we can kind of dive into what we've got going on here, right? For sure. Let's yes. pop on over to Photoshop. And All I'm right, Val. Sure I have ch uh, chat up because I can see friendly faces in For our sure. chat, but not in our YouTube chat yet. Hey everybody, by the way, Umicorn, Bliss, Jack is our moderator today. Thank you so much, Jack. Rick, good to see you. Dee, Alessandra, thank you so much. Alessandra was giving us some love in an earlier stream today. Alessandra asked me uh, a lot, like, if we're going live, and it always, like, warms my heart that, yes! uh, that Alessandra is looking forward to our stream. I love it. Oliver, hi, Wade, good to see you guys. Um, okay, so Val, what is your project today so this is going to be like a cute little greeting card that you could send somebody for the holidays um and it says this season i'm thankful for and then we have a pie or what will eventually become a pie um during the course of the show yes um and uh, i'm really excited to number one um explore a lot of various textures and show you guys how i like to use pattern brushes to create um textures and suggest materials um in a i suppose this will be one of the more like um I, I suppose you could categorize it as like children's elo styles that i do but my children's elo stuff also is a little terrifying i just can't shake that <laughs> so it's gonna be like creepy but fun um kind of style and how i like to use those pattern brushes to to do that um but also 
Um, I'm going to need help from the chat to suggest things that we're thankful for. And mine, if I'm going to put my own stuff here, obviously I would add like, you know, friends, family, togetherness and stuff. Um, and then gotcha. the, the big, the big half of our pie here would definitely be internet access. <laughs> being Actual being, pie. Yeah. Actual <laughs> pie. <laughs> you know, so I thought it would be fun to like, to noodle around and be a little goofy with that. So if you guys have any suggestions um, for things that you're thankful for or funny memes or whatever that you would like to incorporate into this, definitely let me know. What about you? Cause you've got a great crayon orange muffin recipe here, which sounds absolutely delicious. So how are you incorporating this into your project, Cody? Um, I just want to say to what you just said a minute ago that you just can't shake the creepiness off your children's illustration. I have the exact opposite problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what? Can't shake I believe the you. Kids look yeah. off of my creepy artwork. <laughs> my quote unquote creepy artwork. Creepy Cody artwork is yeah. actually it's actually just as adorable as your usual work, but like everybody's face is serious. Yeah, That's exactly. Good. It's got it's got mean eyebrows. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> like angry brows. Uh oh. Yeah, the bear's <laughs> angry. Watch out. Um, okay, so this recipe is actually from one of my favorite content creators um, at Quiet in the Land. I've been following her for many, many years. Um, and this recipe is actually uh, for free on her blog. If you guys want to see the entire thing, I didn't put all of the like directions or anything on this little card here. But if you guys would like to check that out, go to her blog. Um, she also has a YouTube channel. She has really, really lovely content. Um, if you guys are like looking for like farm style, like um, cook from scratch type recipes and stuff. Um, so I, what my plan is, is I am going to, I just have this little like card, you know, I have all of the ingredients here. And if you guys wanted to do this yourself, um, you could also just make a second page and then put all of the, um, you know, steps in place of the ingredients. So it's like a two pager, you know, but what my plan is, is to kind of just fill in this negative space here and just like kind of draw in some little ingredients and maybe some muffins down, like finished muffins down here at the bottom. Um, I actually just made this cran orange muffin recipe the other day. And she also has a cream cheese drizzle frosting that I made, which was amazing. So if you guys, I highly recommend this. If you guys are cran orange people, um, cranberries are in season right now. So mm -hmm. um, I have been uh, really liking the cranberry recipes. I, <laughs> I really love cranberries. And I yeah. feel like it's one of those things where you either hate it or love it because I've mm -hmm. heard a lot of people say like, it's really not there. Some people can't eat like the bitterness, Yeah, you know, but I have been making like craisin cookies for like two yes. decades. So I really oh, love yeah. doing like craisin oatmeal cookies, yeah. which I think oatmeal cookies is also one of the things where people are like, either I hate this a lot or I, when I was favorite. growing up, I was always the only one that went for the oatmeal oatmeal or oatmeal raisin cookies mm -hmm. and everyone's like how can you eat that i love oatmeal raisin cookies yeah <laughs> i do too it's so it's it's so cozy to me yeah like i i just it because it feels like i don't know i also really just like eating oatmeal like i would eat, yes I, I would eat like a lot of oatmeal so um yeah it just seems like a, a a fun like cozy type of meal to have um it's definitely one of my go-tos so if you put it in a cookie i will consume it that's how i feel about it <laughs> oh and i also wanted to show you guys my technical my <laughs> cody it's the file is called cody's very technical perspective terms png mm -hmm. um <laughs> So basically, I just kind of lined out for you guys, like just a few different explanations, not really explanations, but examples, I guess, examples mm -hmm. of like different types of perspective that I personally might use. Um, so first, we have uh, the mostly realistic perspective, I would say that this is kind of like, you know, it, it's, it's like the, the cake that's, you know, in perspective, it's got like the little ellipses here. So you can kind of show a little bit like of real perspective that you might see. Um, then we have um, the round flat perspective, and then we have the round round perspective. I don't know if any of these actu have actual terms. Please let me know if they do, because I just made this up on the fly when I when I did this file. I don't. I, this is this is just how I remember it for myself because I don't. I've just 
seen it visually, so I didn't know mm-hmm. if it had a name or not. But, um, you know, round, flat, it's flat on the bottom, round on the top, round, round. It's both round. And then mm-hmm. flat, flat, It what, what Cody uses most, according to this file, um, is flat on the top and flat on the bottom. And then side profile, you know, of course, you can always do that, too, um, which is uh, technically flat on the top and flat on the bottom, too, but it's a little bit different. <laughs> You said what Cody uses more or in like from this file in the tone of voice, like you, you, you could or could not confirm. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, apparently it's what apparently. she uses. Um, possibly. <laughs> um, cannot confirm 100%, but it is, it is likely uh, that Cody is fond of, of said perspective. No, right. I really love that too, because I feel like, um, Number one, this is like one of those signature Cody things that I think a lot of people um, love to to learn about when it comes to how you approach a lot of your um, pieces and things. Um, and it's also really helpful just to be able to see something like as simple mm-hmm. as a cake, because I feel like most people are going to have that frame of reference of like, OK, this is a cake. You know, I think we can we can picture a cake in in our minds if we um, are asked to. And so seeing that in a different perspective, like such a simple shape that is also such a rec- recognizable item um, can really help you elaborate on that perspective for a plethora of different things. Sure. Um, yeah. So I Thanks. love to see it. You're welcome. Um, and then I also wanted to show you guys before we get going into my project here, I know I haven't even started yet, but I wanted just wanted to show you guys some examples of what I was thinking in terms of my project because I've done like ingredients kind of like illustrations before. So last year for Beartober, um, my Inktober list that I do sometimes, um, we had actually, I forget what this prompt was. Oh, the prompt was pie. Um, so <laughs> I did like this flat lay of like different, like pumpkin pie ingredients. Like here's like a little pie slice and like some cream and butter and a little mm-hmm. flour bag. So this is kind of like wh- what I have in mind for like what, how I'm going to illustrate. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Susan Branch. Um, my mom had a lot of her cookbooks when I was a kid Susan and Branch. they're all illustrated. Um, she like made her career out of illustrated cookbooks. Um, if you guys have never heard of it, like you can Google it. She has a very distinct style. Um, but that was kind of like what has inspired me, like her work has inspired, um, kind of like me doing like these flat lays and stuff. Yeah. I've seen these. This is one of those things that's like so recognizable to me and like growing up, but I didn't have a name to go with it. Yes, absolutely. I love this. Um, Um, yeah. So I am going to go ahead and just start figuring out what ingredients I want to draw. What are you doing? What are you up to, Val? Well, I've created um, like kind of this laid out version, which looks like a 3D pie. Um, Mm -hmm. And we can start to really just um, like detail all of this, I think. Um, And I'm going to choose some colors. Like I kind of want to do like your standard color palette of like warm tones, earthy tones, you know, maybe like... um, your, I guess, Cody Bear colors that are like, you know, like a nice burnt orange, maybe a warm, like olive green, those kinds of things. And then I would like to choose a Val color, which I realize that there's like the Val color, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I might, I might squeeze some purple in there, but I'd like to choose something, um, that is a little different, um, than the, the overarching color palette and see, Um, what we can get with that. But for now, I think I'm going to start with those earth tones and then just start like kind of detailing this, throwing it in um, with, I believe, so we can, I I kind of like approach this in a few different ways. I have certain um, like techniques as far as illustrating simple shapes. Um, And there's a couple of them that I like to do. One that you folks have probably seen more often than anything and that is like the dissolve brush so if Mm -hmm. i choose like a random color um and i'll probably come in there's some like little straggler um hard edges here which i kind of want to um clean up just a little bit so that things are a little 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 more smooth a little cleaner um 
but I will just like paint bucket in a shape and then I will use um, my brush on a soft round opacity with the mode set to dissolve and snag like a and snag a lighter color and make our brush large, which I'm just using the left and right bracket keys. Um, and it kind of paints in this really nice, if I um, actually want to make sure that I'm on another layer with either clipping mask um, or I, you could also just do like a lock transparency on that shape and just paint within that shape. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of adds like this really nice texture to it, um, which helps me kind of get the point across in a really attractive and dynamic looking way. Um, so I do love doing that. Um, but one of the things, especially if I have enough time, which typically for a stream like this, I have more time than I might usually have if I was doing, say, I don't know, like a, a DCC or something mm -hmm. like I can, I can fit in a little bit more is I like to use one of, um, Kyle's brushes, which is the, um, vinyl scraper brush from mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Keith Herring. Yes, uh, that is that, a great uh, brush. Love isn't it. it good? Yeah, it's so good. I want to see if usually I have it right up here. And if I don't, I do have my Keith Herring um, pack. Oh, I can search. I can search brushes. Final scraper. Boom. Um, I've never done that before. That's the first time I've ever done that in Photoshop is huh. search brush titles in, in the brushes. So you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I like the vinyl scraper because it's like a um like a big swatch of like paint kind of. Mm -hmm. Um and I like to overlay a bunch of like craziness in first. So like I have this orange background. This is gonna be like a I'm gonna just gonna go for like a standard like pumpkin pie type pie. Um to begin with before we get a little crazy. So I'll throw like that orange in there and I'll kind of mix in and like sampling just to give it like a texture. And then sometimes I like to choose a color that is like unrelated just to sprinkle around in there. So maybe we choose like a greenish color um, or a bluish color, even though that's like slightly odd um, and throwing it in there in like random places and then also kind of going back over it with the overarching color palette has like it adds a lot of texture to it in a way that like gives you this glimpse like it's not just a flat color it makes it look a lot less flat i'll say that mm -hmm. um is that it kind of adds a lot more um depth to it i think another color that probably would have would have worked honestly would be like a, a warmer purple maybe we could do it that way too um because i think that would blend well with these but i will like start with a base um like so so that it's like textury um and that is you know where we will start to layer texture onto so i'll make a new layer and then i'll grab the same orange um, but i think that we will want to um bring it into like a maybe like a yellow color like a bright yellow maybe something that's like slightly more orangey um, and start to highlight it so if we put like a highlight maybe that's a little too bright uh, put a highlight like around the rim of our pie here, which starts to look cool. Um, and then we can grab like a darker red to put around the edge. Um, and I just think that it looks really cool because it starts to be very like hand painted DIY feeling. Yeah. And as you move through this process, um, especially if you're very intentional with where you're putting your shadows and your highlights, you can almost start to create like a seriously 3D look with this technique mm -hmm. that still feels like it's um, put together by hand, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, almost like, you know, kind of give it like this overlapping paper mache vibe. Yeah. Um, what I like. I, I remember um, a while back you did, uh, I think it was a stickers stream. Um, and I just like, I really love the look of that dissolve mm. texture. Like it, 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 like it really makes it feel really tactile. It almost kind of gives it a vintage look. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. like it feels, um, printed, I guess, yeah. you know, like kind of like when you add noise to a flat color, it kind of almost makes it look like paper. Exactly. Um, it kind of, yeah, it kind of like does the same thing. It's really neat. 
I think it's for me, it was, it was like starting to use that dissolve um, on the brush like that was for two reasons. Number one is I, I, I have like so many noise textures that I will like overlay onto, um, onto a piece. And the thing that always trips me up whenever I use that process is that like, I'll do it and then I will like want to add something on top of that, but I can't cause it's the, it's the, the layer, like the, um, right. like a texture layer added on. Um, and I find that, and you guys, you Cody, and maybe you folks in chat probably also felt this where like, you have a piece that looks better with a texture overlaid because it adds just like a perfect little extra something something mm -hmm. but when you have to go back underneath that texture like hide it and work on like the main meat of your project um it's really easy to kind of like run out of steam and like lose the inspiration for a piece when you have to keep previewing it and working on it in like the least favorable version and then, you know, see it later without the texture. Yeah. So I could like basically paint in that texture, you know, and keep it looking like it has the noise filter on it all the time. Um, and then Definitely. the other thing was just, I was like, what is dissolve for? <laughs> yeah, that's you know? so true. You know, like I, I, ha I have known that dissolve has existed for so long and it's like, mm -hmm. why would, what context would anyone ever use this in? <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. And then I was like, every time I had like seen one of my projects with the dissolve mode on, it was always, I clicked it by accident and I'm like, oh, not that. <laughs> yeah. you know, so I was that's like, funny. how could you really feasibly use this and then um one of the big things was i didn't really understand what the blend mode was or did um and then mm -hmm. i heard um there was an adobe live stream on where it was broken down and i thought that it was really really interesting as far as what it's actually doing when you apply it as a blending mode or apply it as a um uh like a mode to your brush um and it's actually really really helpful if you think about it so um if you are using dissolve which i'll come back over here um to dissolve uh when you well let's put it on normal first when you use a brush um and you're doing like you know you're you're painting basically with a gradient you know you it's it's getting softer at the edges um and like more pigmented as you um get further into the stroke uh which is really cool but there's certain projects that you work on where it's not really possible to have gradients Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that you can that you can do or maybe you're using a limited color palette, you know, or maybe the gradients are just not looking so great when you apply um, a let me grab like a darker color here so we can really see this against it when you apply dissolve. Um, everything is at 100% opacity. Um, so it's still giving you that like that gradient effect except that all of the pixels are at 100% and it's just spreading those pixels out mm. um, with a little bit of distance in between each one. Um, so I have used this when I have made like um, GIFs in the Photoshop timeline where you have yeah. limited, um, uh, very limited uh, Oh no, did we lose Val? Val, come back to us. What has happened? Well, colors that are available oh, to you. She's back. Are you? Oh, hello. There we go. I'm here. <laughs> okay. I'm here. Great. I think that that was my whole computer that was like, do you want to stream? Oh um, no. Yeah. Um, my, my little baby computer nerd heart just skipped a beat. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> if that, if that stays cool. I do want to point out, however, that when I came back, um, Zoom thought it would be cool to run through every single movement you made while I was gone and catch up. <laughs> so I got to see all your facial expressions like really, really quick. Oh, that's um, hilarious. I yeah. That. that did make my day. Um, so maybe it was worth. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and see if everything is broken now. I hope not. I'm going to go, if you want to pop over to Cody's stream, I'm going to restart my Photoshop is what I'm going to do. There we go. Okay. 
Tell us what you're working on, Cody. <laughs> well, I am just kind of like trying to figure this out as I go. I'm looking at our ingredients here and I'm just figuring out like which ingredients might be the best option mm. um, to draw for like, just like as the visual representation. Mm -hmm. um so we have like a little flour bag like maybe like a little can of baking powder baking soda salt like i decided since i did a can for the baking powder baking soda i put the salt in like a little bowl mm -hmm. um just to kind of like make it a little bit different vary it up a little bit and mm -hmm. uh right now i'm attempting to draw a little maple syrup bottle i think um and i, I might resize maple syrup <laughs> i might resize these uh items too as i go just to like fill in the space as i see fit mm -hmm. um because i don't really know how much or how little i want to draw yet so mm -hmm. it's kind of just like more of an intuitive decision as i work mm -hmm. um so yeah i'm just kind of feeling it out i guess i think that's how that's how it goes a lot of time um, where you kind of have a concept in your head and you know how you want to approach it, but you do have to leave yourself a little bit of experimentation room, right? Yeah. Um, I think that some of my projects that have been the most disappointing to me have been the ones I've tried to plan every single little minute yes. detail of. And then when you can't get it perfectly to that initial vision that was so heavily planned, the whole thing feels like a failure. You put too um, much expectation on how it will, how you think it will come out. And then mm -hmm. when it doesn't meet those high expectations, you're like, oh, well, this is dumb. I don't like yeah. this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel like I find myself in that position by accident all the time. So now I have like built in padding for like, and this is where I will allow what's going to happen to happen. You yeah. Know? And in that, I think that you've done kind of what I like to do, where it's like you kind of plan out, you have your layout really, but then you give yourself that wiggle room to live like, what am I going to put here? So it, it's it's a full fleshed concept with, with, with wiggle, wiggle room. Right. Definitely. Um, That's a great way to put it. All right. I think that my Photoshop um, is very smooth now. Good. Um, and I would love to point out that another thing that I have done several times in the past is actually combine um, the vinyl scraper with the noise brush because oh. it looks really, really cool. So um, if I come into like the bottom of my pie here um, and make myself a new layer, I will like take the darker color and start to like really, really shade. And I think that's what starts to give it like almost that hint of realism in a not so real scene so i mm -hmm. can make my brush really big and start to add like shading around the edges and i could even come in and like if we <clears throat> grab like a serious yellow like a bright yellow color um we can like do some almost like the lighting with the dissolve brush oh yeah that looks great and then you can see all of that texture underneath it, you know? It looks so um, lovely and, like, just decadent. <laughs> Thanks. That yeah. is all an artist ever wants to hear about their work, <laughs> is that it's decadent. That yeah. is beautiful. Thank you. Especially when it's a pie. <laughs> yes, especially when it's a pie. But I feel like I can do that to a lot of this. Um, and there's, there's also some stuff that you can do... Um, I think we both kind of, we both use a lot of like Kyle Webster brushes, but I actually mm -hmm. think that since I've been doing more and more art with you, I have been using Kyle's brushes more often nice. and like branching out into more of what he has to offer, but a great, a great uh, place um, for some of the repeating pattern brushes is also here as you are like, you know, as we start to get into decorating the top of the cake, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I think that I'm going to go ahead and group these pieces together. And I'm going to call this um, Thick Slice. I wanted to ask chat, what is everyone's favorite ho holiday dessert? Mm. Is there a specific, or if you want to make it a little bit more simple, do you like, if you like pie, what is your favorite type of pie? But what is your favorite holiday dessert? Does anyone have any like 
family traditions that like you always make this specific dessert every mm. single year i'm gonna try I, I always man the deviled eggs that's Ooh, love deviled eggs and i make a tray of deviled eggs to eat before the festivities begin and mm -hmm. i usually end up with about four trays and i do like a classic tray of deviled eggs it's just like your standard like for those of you who because maybe there's some folks in chat that don't know um deviled eggs it's a very like traditional holiday um dish uh here in the states and it is i'm gonna draw i'm gonna draw some deviled eggs so the deviled <laughs> eggs is like it's you funny because i'm i'm actually drawing eggs right now too. Eggs. perfect <laughs> Um, so deviled eggs are like you have like the you boil a bunch of eggs and you cut those boiled eggs in half um, and you take all of the yolks out of the halved eggs so you end up with just um, if I do a little I'm going to do like a little half egg here um, you end up with just the egg whites with like the whole like the holes empty like a mm -hmm. halved avocado without the sh the seed in it without the pit um and then you take all of the um egg yolks like just the dark yellow part and you put it in a bowl and you mix it up with a bunch of stuff and make like this delicious um like seasoned yolk stuff and mm -hmm. i i mean you typically people put like relish or pickle juice um salt pepper um mayonnaise like uh paprika or paprika sprinkled on top you know but you end up with something that looks a little something like this where it's like this like custard you know kind of in the center we'll do a little little more yellow i'm getting into this this is i <laughs> have not you're gonna flush out yeah, yeah how satisfying this would be <laughs> devil eggs so are satisfying so <laughs> and you have like a little shine you also people like to um, take a little bit of paprika and like sprinkle some paprika on top so oh, that yeah. is like a deviled egg um that is like a classic deviled egg and it's super tasty if you don't like eggs you're out of luck because right it's, there we go we got a perfect picture of deviled <laughs> eggs which you know what i didn't do such a bad job on the fly i'm pretty it proud looks of great. myself yeah yeah <laughs> um but i like to do um deviled eggs that like as more dishes of them come out to the table, there's like more and more stuff on them. Um, so like the classic deviled eggs come out and then the deviled eggs come out that just have like an absorbent amount of bacon on top of it. Ooh, for no you are a deviled egg connoisseur. Yes. You are, yeah, you know what you're doing. And then fully loaded deviled eggs. So it's like oh. you dress them like you would a baked potato. Like, um, yeah, like chives and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that sounds so that great. is definitely my signature <clears throat> thing um and this year i am trying to make for the very first time an eggnog pie Ooh, that's gonna be that sounds my good new, yeah my new thing what about you guys i'm gonna need to know from chat and also from you what is your do you have any like little side things that you love to do too because sometimes the side dishes are the best uh well for thanksgiving this year me and my husband cj are actually hosting for the first time so I, yeah, I have a whole homemade menu planned um, for, that I'm going to be making um, next week. And oh I am very gosh. excited. Um, actually, a lot of my recipes are coming from uh, the same content creator. One of which I make, have been making for the past few years, which is hot cocoa cookies. Oh. Um, and they literally, they are so good. They, I didn't use that recipe today because it's actually one of her grandmother's recipes. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to put her family recipe on blast. But mm -hmm. if you uh, go to her website, you can actually purchase her little uh, like um, PDF cookbook that has the mm -hmm. recipe in there. And um, she's Susan Branch? No, uh, oh, this no, is Quiet in the Land. That's the, the, the land. same girl that it did the Korean orange muffins. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love those cookies. I have been making them like multiple times a year now mm -hmm. for for the holidays. They're super good. I love CJ that. just said those cocoa cookies are so good. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I like holiday foods that are like made out of popular comfort foods. 
Mm -hmm. You know, like taking a, a popular comfort drink, like in this case, like hot cocoa, um, or something else that you love and like making it a different dish just yeah. like always makes me really happy or like that sort of thing. Um, in the past, I've done cranberry sauce, ginger pear, upside down cake, cornbread stuffing, etc. Cornbread stuffing, sometimes the stuffing is the best part too. Oh right? yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I have always been a stuffing lover my whole life. Stuffing is like, I oh, yeah. give me some mashed potatoes and stuffing and I will be good for Thanksgiving. <laughs> like... I could live on mashed potatoes, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like I could just, as long as I had mashed potatoes and like all of the classic dressings for like yeah. a baked potato, you wouldn't have to feed me ever as so long as good. I had access to those things. <laughs> um, that is the honest truth. Um, so yeah, this is uh, definitely... Tis the, tis the season for eating good food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do, I think that I am going to use minimal colors for the top of this pie. And I'm going to do like, um, like a pale kind of color, mm. um, on one side of it. So like the, the edge, like to kind of denote the edge of that, um, slice that's popping out of it to really give it some definition, I think is going to be pretty cool. And then we'll kind of have some darker um, colors towards the back. But what I'm really going for here is like a total painted face. Um, and then if we add a little bit more of that um, kind of uh, like dissolve brush stuff, it'll be very brush stuff. light. Yeah. Indeed. Brush stuff. That's literally this whole show. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> if you like brush stuff then you're in the right place um i think that uh one of my favorite parts about this show actually is how the two of us tend to sometimes we use like the same brushes for completely different things and then mm -hmm. sometimes we both use totally differing brushes that have like way different um like settings and things but to paint the same subject matter <laughs> yeah totally photoshop's funny like that photoshop is funny like that i think it it rings true that like you could have an entire career using nothing but photoshop every single day um and you could still only be hanging out in 20 percent of the program right yeah like you could be, you, you have your little corner of Photoshop and that's what you do. And then somebody could have a completely different job description and also only use Photoshop and they're working in a separate corner. Never totally. Never touching like all of the same tools as you. I, with the exception of what I've, you know, learned from Adobe Live, I know nothing about photo compositing or anything mm. like that. Like there mm -hmm. are only like a few tools that I really use, like brush and mm -hmm. eraser <laughs> like i just draw like that's that's pretty much it <laughs> yeah yeah i think but i think that that's like you know that's the beauty of it yeah and um i also find that um adobe live has been the the place where like i learned how to do most of the things in the other corners mm -hmm. um and that's why i have like this epiphany where i'm like oh my gosh like Jesus Ramirez and I, we use a lot of the same tools, but then sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, I didn't even know that tool was in this. Yeah. <laughs> How? <laughs> it's a good time exploring the Photoshops. Jack says, my birthday is occasionally on Thanksgiving, so I guess my cake is my tradition. That's great. Nice. Happy early birthday, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm like also looking at just how everybody, um, what everybody likes to eat. CJ saying um, chicken and waffles for Christmas breakfast. That sounds amazing. Oh, is that what we're doing? Is that, yeah. <laughs> Did you clear that with the boss? Is that, is that how? Is that how I'm finding out? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. No Thanksgiving plans. Families in another state. One year we had pancakes, grilled cheese, and tomato soup. And bulgogi for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh my gosh. That just made me think, like, 
what if what if somebody did like like Korean barbecue Thanksgiving, but it's like still like that take on traditional dishes. Uh huh. That would be amazing and delicious. Like have cultural influence on yeah. the dishes. Yeah. Exactly. I think that would be amazing. Oh, let's see. Oh, I also see Miss Melanie hanging out in the YouTube chat. It's good to see you again, Miss Melanie. Melanie. Thanks for coming back. I just said I wanted that. I'm so sorry, <laughs> CJ. <laughs> CJ's, CJ's in the background, and I'm over here telling on him. I'm, I'm stirring up trouble. My bad. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit more um, of our nifty texture just to add a little bit of that back in. But I think I pretty much painted up this pie. It also, like, we're going to have to soften this because the pie also is looking like it's curved out of sandstone. And I mm. want it to look tasty. So we're going to have to make it look tastier than this. But hopefully as we get into our, um, our uh, different pie textures on top it's going to start looking a lot more um like a juicy delicious pie actually right. I think pies are really juicy well if you have a fruit pie i guess i would be down be to juicy. having a pie statue honestly i would i would i uh, would yeah i would own your pie sandstone statue mm -hmm. okay thank you perfect as mm -hmm. long as you as long as cody bear um would lay down money for it yes. then it's good enough for me you know cody bear approved yes cody bear approved <laughs> uh, I'm going to call this a large pie top, and then I'm going to call the other one small pie top, small. just so that I know where I'm going. Look at me, oh boy. chat, and Cody, I want you just to bask in this moment of me organizing my file as I go. I'm impressed, like... <laughs> honestly. During a stream? Wow. Yeah. Small pie top. And now we're going to do um, some interesting pattern texture. So I'm going to make a layer above this. And we're going to dive into Kyle's um, halftone pack, uh, nice. which you can find if you honestly, let me see if this rings true before I tell you where to find this. I think if you Google um, Kyle Webster brushes, um, you can find them on the Adobe website. But I think you can also say, um, like in the settings, I think you can also say like, find, yeah, get more brushes and it should also open yep. up, um, a path, uh, which is just, if you, um, open up your brushes palette and hit that little gear in the corner, which I'm doing that by the way, um, with the pen tap on my actual stylus, that's how I open my brush palette and you can scroll down to get more brushes, uh, and you can find them there, but I have, um, his half tone pack uh added in here and the half tone pack is really really fabulous because there are a bunch of patterns and things um there's i've got the screen tones um and the half tones um and these like we can just snag a random one let's do like um let's do let's do like a just like a half tone dots so these half tone dots um, they all connect to each other. So if you are, this is really great too. If you're doing like graphic design in Photoshop mm -hmm. and you want to add like half tones, um, instead of using like a texture, you could come in with the, with the brush and the really beautiful thing about the way that a lot of these Kyle Webster brushes work is that if I don't press very hard, you can see that I get, um, like this really subtle, uh, dot, but if I press very hard, you can see that it increases the dots shape, um, mm -hmm. but not like it doesn't make it like solid and opaque. Uh, yeah. And also, if I lift my pen off of the um, off of my tablet or my Cintiq, whatever it is I'm using, and then press down again in another place and start to paint, it always connects into the same. Because I'm sure some of you have experienced brushes where um, you get like a really intricate pattern, such as like this hex pattern, um, and you put down you know, some of this cool stuff, and then you would start painting on another place. And by the time you connect, those patterns overlap in a way that is not symmetrical. Yeah. But this, anywhere you press, as long as you're using the same like opacity or same pressure, you know, it will always connect and be really, really nice. Um, so That's very awesome. cool pattern brushes, indeed. Um, and we're gonna find something that can give us a little pizzazz here on the uh, on the pie. 
I'm thinking always love me some pie pizzazz. Yeah, you know, that's what I live for, really, mm-hmm. is is pie pizzazz. Um, I don't know about anybody in the in the chat, um, but that's where it's at, I think. Mm-hmm. Let's see what we can do. What is this? Okay, that could be cool. Um, another thing we could do is we could find like a really large pattern that looks like um, I was gonna do like a pumpkin pie, but something oh. that could uh, like we could turn it into like the crisscross hatches of like a, a fruit pie. Could mm-hmm. be cool. Um, and I feel like you could do that a lot of different ways. So I have one that's like, you know, like these hatches are pretty thin. Um, and typically he does add like more than one size of various um, things. Like here's like diagonal left and you could, you know, do like that. But you can also use this as an asset too, which I have done um, many times is I will like come back to this diagonal and I will maybe, you know, like add some diagonal hatches and then I'll transform that and maybe I make it larger um, and just like use a a portion of it, you know, like maybe I make that larger, throw that right in there. Um, and I'm actually going to, with my lasso, I will select just the portions of this I really want to use and control J and hide that. And then I can come in here and honestly, I wonder if I group everything I've got going on here together, then I could clip that to the group. Hey! looking cool it also looks like chocolate drizzle a little bit it does Ooh. Uh oh (laughs) i don't know guys might be a chocolate pie might be where it's at don't you just hate it when you start a project and you just accidentally end up with chocolate pie (laughs) it happens to me all the time honestly every day every day Mm -hmm. try to paint a monster chocolate pie try to paint a witch a wizard chocolate pie all chocolate of my pie paintings, monster. yeah, all of my paintings were painted in grayscale and started out as a chocolate pie. <laughs> um, that's the truth of it. I think I am going to offset this, however, because one thing about it is I don't want those lines to cross too much. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to come over with my lasso, handy dandy lasso. Cool. Um, I think this area, and I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to make that a clipping mask, and then I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm just going to make sure that it's offset a lot. Also, I wanted to suggest the idea, I completely forgot about it until just now, um, that if you guys like the idea of an illustrated recipe like feel free to do that for your own recipes you know like Mm. maybe if you have like a family recipe like you know it's been passed down from generation to generation and you know like maybe you want to you know give your grandmother or whoever created the recipe um you know a gift or something if you're sending out thanksgiving cards you know you can always illustrate something like this and you know slip it into that card and print it out um, and put it in the card. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, your family member would really appreciate that because it's like, oh, that's so, it's so pretty and illustrated, you know? Yeah, I think that's a great, like a, that would be a great holiday gift. Pretty easy little gift that you can do for free, really, you know? Honestly, you know what? I might do that because my grandmother has a like one of those little, um, I think it's really, it was like for like addresses and like business cards and stuff. But the she Rolodex? Has one of the, yeah, like a Rolodex full of um, recipes from my great grandmother. And some oh, of them nice. are fading, mm-hmm. you know, um, in her handwriting. It would be really cool to like, with the power of Photoshop, you could take an old recipe like that, bring it in, enhance the, like the handwritten ink so that yeah. it's more visible. And then maybe... Um, accompany that uh handwriting 
with an illustration and like yeah print out some of the some of the recipes would be a yeah. great holiday absolutely gift. that's amazing i might just have to do that thanks cody yeah that is starting to look a little more delicious <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like a cheesecake cheesecake with chocolate drizzle it does it definitely does um, and I wonder if I could also add some hand-drawn stuff, like if I just free-handed some other drizzle onto this, oof, oof, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think about slogans? Because I was going to do like a, you know, we and we could still do that with like a, this is, you know, the like one item that would be cool for you know, what I'm thankful for. And then this could be like a different part of like what I'm thankful for, but it would also be neat um, to do like a slogan on the cheesecake. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like things mm -hmm. that would be interesting. I'm brainstorming. In the meantime, however, we're going to grab some purple because nobody can stop me. Of course. We need, we need purple. Purple. Shocking no purple. one. Purple. So if there's purple on it, so is this like a purple chocolate drizzle or is it like a blueberry drizzle or? I couldn't tell you. I, a, I just, a, just like a magical berry drizzle. <laughs> I think a magical berry drizzle suits, yeah. suits the suits the purpose here. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that purple legitimately looks super awesome. And I think I, think I accidentally painted a Halloween cheesecake. <laughs> Oops, guys. Only on juxtapaint, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um, this Whoops. was not planned at all, but I think that's what I accidentally did. I think I started making like a Beetlejuice cheesecake. <laughs> that might be what this is. I'm not uh... mad, though. Um, and oh my goodness, we have four minutes. We do? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh no. I didn't get to coloring, but I almost finished the whole page. I That's amazing. Was just doing the last little like little I was doing a little frosting little frosting dealy bopper here. That's the only kind of frosting to to do. <laughs> is frosting dealy bopper. Just yeah. saying you you're on the right track, Cody. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty satisfied with our work though because I feel like you know we've done a lot of these episodes where we've done a lot of different things um, mm -hmm. and we've we've done like full illustrations in the midst of of an episode we have done um, like single items with different variations on those items and stuff and this has been one of those where like you just really gave us the rundown of not only how to paint things in perspective but then multiple different kinds of objects and various shapes and forms using that approach which is like honestly I feel like anybody could come back and rewatch this and pretty much know how to paint anything in that perspective. <laughs> And anyone would also know how to draw a sandstone magical cheesecake as well. Yeah. And where are you going to get that kind of content, yeah. chat? Where, Only on Adobe Live. Only on Adobe Live <laughs> could you be prepared to illustrate a Beetlejuice-themed cheesecake for no reason at all. This is mm -hmm. the kind of skill you need in your back pocket if you're going to work in this industry. Who this knows <laughs> if you'll have a client that needs that. Yeah. You, you probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> You probably will never need this, but but you've got it. <laughs> CJ just said, I swear I googled sandstone magical cheesecake and nothing came up. Now it will. <laughs> now it will. Now it will. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> okay, I think I've got, I just wanted to put like a little bit more onto the top of this, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to finish this card and I'm going to put, I'm going to put something funny on this card, but that's a pretty good, like I would eat this. I would eat this. Yeah. Cake. That's pretty great. That's great. Um, I think that I will, while, while we are still live, I will add the, um, friends. I'm going to spell it like Cody spells friends. Friends. <laughs> friends. Internet. 
<laughs> so I can watch my shows in solitude over like the whole days. Yes. <laughs> and then I will do a little impromptu things I'm thankful for. So we'll have like our start to our card. Um, and then you have a fabulous start to your um, recipe. And I'm going to have to try this recipe. <laughs> it's you great. Know? It's great. I love it. Just my only my only thing, if you've never made crayon orange muffins, the one thing that I learned last time I would make them is make sure you cut your cranberries very, very small. Otherwise, you will have a very big bite mm -hmm. of bitter cranberry. <laughs> yes, that is so true. That is so true. I, I love using craisins when yeah. baking with cranberry yeah because that's like a like a great alternative as well um if you can't find cranberry i am i'm having a you know you ever like go to write letters and you know, you're like why didn't you start sooner and make your letters smaller <laughs> no planning it's like when yeah. when somebody's making a you know a a marker poster and it like yes. starts way far you know and, and then the rest squishy. of the letter is all squished yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't undo then mistakes mm -hmm. were made <laughs> yep it's not photoshop thankful for is this on the same yeah it sure is getting that getting that drawing on the same layer mojo going on because uh. i'm a professional Yes. Um, but I think that's probably, I think that's probably the end of our episode. I can't, I still Absolutely. can't believe Absolutely, we are at 55, yep. Yeah, time flies, but thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Cody, for being um, my friend on the yeah. Paint show. This has been a blast. This is our last episode of Juxta Paint by you got by the way, you guys. Um, we are going to have a brand new rotation of streams coming in uh, for the next few months here. Mm -hmm. So um, we will let you guys know what is coming up on the schedule and everything. But we just like really appreciate you guys hanging out with us, and it's been so fun having this show. Um, so yeah, have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye, folks. Bye.